Okay guys, so today I wanted to check out a video by Reggie that's called The Death of Yokai Watch. Now I actually didn't have any plans to do like a reaction to this or anything. I did watch it a few days ago, thought it was pretty interesting, uh, left my sort of opinions in the comments. And the thing is, I put this video together talking about why we want Yokai Watch back and I think that me doing a lot of searching about Yokai Watch is what led the algorithm into me seeing this video in the first place. But after I put out that video, I noticed a lot of people that were saying Yokai Watch is dead, Yokai Watch is failing, this and that, and realizing that this video did come out a couple weeks before mine uh, makes me think that a lot of people are taking um, that opinion and uh, bringing it from this video. So I wanted to discuss it. Now, let me just say the video is actually really well put together and I don't disagree with everything that uh, Reggie said. But there are a couple things I wanted to sort of um, discuss and clarify. So, yes, we got another reaction video. Uh, hopefully, it'll be uh, something you guys enjoy because I do think that these types of videos are important, especially when discussing uh, important discussions, especially when it comes to monster taming. So, let's go into it. Let's, let's discuss this guy's points, and I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I don't like. So, let's get into it. It's 2013. The Yokai Watch launches on a Nintendo 3DS and will soon take Japan by storm. The surprise hit would later be brought to the West as well, in the hope of attracting even more gamers to the brand. I also want to quickly point out, I'm not like this huge Yokai Watch fan. Yokai Watch 4, if it does come to the West, will be my first Yokai Watch game that I actually do a playthrough for. So I'm not some like biased Yokai Watch. I, I, I guess the biggest bias is that I want more monster taming games in the West. But that's not where this is coming from. Like I, I want to get into the facts because there's this thing that a lot of people do. When it comes to Yokai Watch and Pokemon and what they consider the benchmark for success, we'll get into that. What level 5, the developers of the game series, didn't realize at the time, however, was that the fall of Yokai Watch would come just as quickly and unexpectedly as the big boom. Yokai Watch was first announced at Tokyo Game Show 2011. Level 5's goal with the game was also, to create a long lasting. Quick note we are on 1.5 times speed. Uh, I figured that would be a lot better so the video doesn't drag on for 40 minutes. So uh, do, do let me know if the 1.5 speed is too much or too little. We can always adjust it in the future. Successful franchise. The game was supposed to be a part of the successful Doraemon franchise, until they later decided to make it something unique. Yokai Watch is about befriending Yokai and fighting hostile Yokai with them. Yokai are Japanese mythical creatures based on legends and myths. So the in game Yokai are actually based on real legends and not just completely made up. When the first game of the <laughs> series was released in Japan for the Nintendo 3DS in July 2013, however, the game wasn't particularly successful. With just 50,000 copies sold, Yokai Watch. So, I mean, that's not like terrible either. Like, a lot of people bring like 50,000, 100,000. The thing is, these types of sales are not unsuccessful when you're looking at it from the perspective of like a budding studio. Everybody wants to look at these numbers that Pokemon brings in, like 20 million and all this. Like, if your first game sells 50,000 and you're kind of like an indie studio, that's pretty damn good. I know plenty of indie devs that can't even break a thousand sales. So, like, I wouldn't consider that unsuccessful. That That's just a personal opinion, but it's because Yokai Watch has such high, has had such high highs that when it does have like uh lows that are a lot like more in tune with what other games in the in the genre are selling like even non indies a lot of people consider it dead at best had a mediocre start and level 5 was probably not satisfied with the initial sales figures but that didn't stop them from continuing to invest in the Yokai Watch franchise and expand the brand then when the Yokai Watch anime launched in January 2014 the brand gained much greater popularity and a month later yeah. in February 2014 Yokai Watch had already sold around half a million copies yeah, over the next few months the anime became increasingly successful and even surpassed the Pokemon anime which is yep. quite popular in Japan in popularity and here you go right here hold on I, I, I want to point this out because uh, he doesn't mention it but it when the anime first aired in 2014, it became popular in Japan. By February, the first game, which originally only sold 53,654 copies, was at over half a million shipped. The anime, which, by the way, half a million is like Digimon level. Like, Digimon Survive sold that much. Uh, but again, um, I think that's Japan only, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the anime was surpassing Pokemon in TV rankings, being compared to it, and being dubbed the Pokemon Killer. This is the type of bullshit you guys gotta stop doing. Yokai Watch was never gonna kill Pokemon. Yokai are very Japanese, okay? Not a lot of people in the West have um, an interest in that. I remember when I was younger <clears throat> and Yokai Watch came out. I, I mean, I wasn't that young. I think I was in college, but I didn't have much interest in Yokai Watch because, like, I didn't really understand what Yokai were, what the point of it was. Some of the designs looked kind of goofy, but again, this isn't something that is going to kill Pokemon. Pokemon has way too much of a widespread appeal. This is going to be more niche by nature. I hate that people want to call something a Pokemon killer. Uh, people did that with Kindred Fates. P 
people uh, were doing that with Temtem. Like, stop. If you're watching this video and you're not part of the monster taming community, j just stop. Okay? If you, if you didn't know that's a bad thing, it's a bad thing. It holds games back. When the sequels, Yokai Watch 2 Ganzo and Yokai Watch 2 Honki, were released in July 2014, the first game had already sold more than 1.2 million copies. The original 50,000. Which, by the way, that sold more in its first week than Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire did in Japan units sold, thus quickly became a million seller. And the second installment, which initially consisted of two games, completely smashed the original game's sales numbers. Yokai Watch 2 sold 1.3 million units yeah. within the first week alone, and was also able to help the sales numbers of the 3DS. Thus, yeah. it sold more copies within the first week alone than the first game sold in an entire year. Since level 5 was already somewhat following Pokemon yeah. due to the two games system, they thought, okay, if it works this well, we'll make an extra version too. Half a year later, in December 2014, Yokai Watch 2 Shinuchi was released, a slightly expanded version of the original game. It included new quests, content from the successful Yokai Watch movie, New Yokai, as well as other things. This game was another huge success, selling 1.2 million copies within just two days. It was clear by now that the Yokai Watch fever yeah. had broke out in Japan. There was a and huge there Yokai no Watch boom in Japan. Soon. Level 5 used this opportunity and expanded the brand further. Mangas, toys, smartphone apps, plushies, board games, everything you could possibly imagine actually existed. Even a Yokai Watch Just Dance edition. No, I'm not <laughs> joking. Japan became a Yokai Watch paradise within just one year. You could find something Yokai Watch related on almost every corner. And all this stuff wasn't just produced in the hopes that someone would buy it. It was super successful with fans all over the country and was often sold out nationwide. Merchandise sales generated 55.2 billion yen yeah. in 2015 alone. That's the equivalent of almost half a billion dollars. The Yokai Watch had become the new Pokemon, and many started calling it the Pokemon. And again, the new Pokemon. It's not the new Pokemon. Stop this. Like, Yokai Watch was never going to be the next Pokemon. Sure, it can it can try to fight for success in Japan over Pokemon, but being something that is so niche in 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 the West, that being these Yokai that a lot of people at the time didn't really understand, that was always bound to make it fail. Pokemon Killer. The success of Yokai Watch was so big that it far surpassed the game series. The Yokai Watch Guidebook became the best selling book in Japan in 2014. This was the first time since the measurement of book sales that a guidebook became the best selling book of the year. The first anime opening theme, Gera Gera Po, made it into the top 50 of the annual music charts. And the first Yokai Watch movie. And this is all pretty typical. Like, like the media from a lot of these franchises outsells the game. Same thing with Pokemon. Had the highest number of ticket sales since 2004. Level 5 had done it. Despite the initial weakness of Yokai Watch, it managed to turn the brand into a new giant. And 2015 was going to expand the series immensely, yet again. While 2013 and 2014 offered Yokai Watch fans many interesting experiences through Yokai Watch 1 and Yokai Watch 2, which consisted of three different versions, things looked a little different in 2015. At the end of 2014, the third version of Yokai Watch 2 had just come out, and a Yokai Watch 3 was not yet ready for the market. That didn't mean, however, that 2015 was going to be an empty year for Yokai Watch fans. Among other things, Level 5 had released the new Yokai Watch spin-off, Yokai Watch Busters, in two different versions. The second season of the anime was airing, and a smartphone puzzle spin-off, Yokai yeah. Watch Puni Puni, was released. Thus, many new, different experiences were offered to Yokai Watch fans. And due to the various genre changes of the spin-offs, new audiences were also attracted to the franchise. Yeah. Yokai Watch Busters, for example, was generally- I don't mean just to be saying, yeah, like, I agree with everything he's saying. <laughs> ...well received by fans and critics, and was often praised for its good and fun gameplay. Fans also liked the fact that you could interact with the Yokai in different ways, and that it was a fresh take on the game's systems. Level 5's mission at the time seems obvious, to further increase the already big market share in order to make the brand even better known than it yeah. already was. And for that, one important thing was still left to do, expanding to the West. Yeah, that's While the big the part, right? certainly helped to make the brand even more popular in Japan. And this is the thing, Yokai Watch, because of its of its really like niche concept, was never going to be this massive success in the West. Now that doesn't mean that the games can't do well, but they're gonna require more marketing, more effort, more um, explanations on the side of the developers to explain to people what these yokai are. Because I, I think in the modern day, like I think the original came out in 2013 in the West, in the modern day in 2023, there's a lot more like people that are, are in tune with Japanese culture. We know a lot more about it. But at the time, not as many people knew as many things. If you want to go back even further, like, I don't know if you guys remember, but a lot of like old uh, anime and stuff like that were very Americanized. And that was because a lot of um, people didn't think that th the uh, culture would sort of translate over. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying that was the, the sort of norm. That's why you used to have a bunch of English anime openings. Now they just uh, play the Japanese ones. But my point is that like back then, there was more of a... Um, need for them to really market in the West. And I don't think they did that very well. Like the only uh, way I ever heard about Yokai Watch back when it came out was that it was going to kill Pokemon basically, which is what a lot of people are saying. And then because fans of Yokai Watch were saying it was going to kill Pokemon, Pokemon fans got defensive doing what Pokemon fans do. And they started shitting on it. The same thing happened with Temtem. It's going to keep happening because Pokemon fans are toxic as hell. Uh, not all, not all, but, but a lot.
It was the move to America and Europe that was the biggest hope. Should Yokai Watch be as big a hit in the West as it was in Japan, they would have really managed to take the whole world by storm. Level 5 announced in April 2015 that Yokai Watch would also launch in the West, and at E3 2015, the game was given a very big stage. An audience of millions was focused on Yokai Watch, and despite the fact that the game series was already a giant in Japan, almost no one here had heard of it before, and gamers weren't exactly excited. The game didn't appeal to many people, and most people didn't know what a phenomenon it had become in Japan. But as we all know, first impressions can be deceiving. When the game was finally released in America in November 2015, and in Europe, in April 2016, there was no hype behind the franchise, and it struggled to gain any traction. Level yeah. 5 therefore refused to give any information about the sales figures for some time, but revealed them after a few months anyway. It managed to sell 400,000 copies in America, within the first- Which, to be honest, is not bad. Like, people act like that's terrible. Like, that's not bad. Digimon Survive sold 500,000 worldwide, right? That's not bad. Like, saying, like, oh, it only sold 400,000 in compared to 1.4 million, like, yeah- Sure, that's like, you know, one, th what, one third, about a, th a little less than a third. Th that's about like 30% of the sales that it got in Japan. But like, how much did translation cost? I guarantee you they made more money on the 400,000 sales than they did porting it over. I 100% I, I guarantee that, okay? These games are selling for like, what, uh, 40 bucks a pop in uh, Canada or whatever. So, you know, multiply that by 400,000. I think, I think they made a good profit. First few months, which was far below level 5's expectations. Also, that's more than Monster Hunter Stories 1 sold uh, worldwide, by the way. But Akihiro Hino, CEO of Level 5, assumed that this would change in half a year to a year, as the start in Japan was also rather slow. What no one could have known at the time, however, was that Yokai Watch had already peaked, and that the fall can come much faster than you could possibly imagine. 2016 was set to be a big year for Yokai Watch, while 2015 saw a few spin offs, as well as the expansion to the West. 2016 <laughs> saw the all new Yokai Watch 3, as well as the tactical role playing yeah. game Yokai Zangoku. And these games were marketed even less in the West than the first one or two. Awaiting Japanese Yokai Watch fans. Yokai Watch like everybody knew about Yokai Watch One. It was kind of like a trend trending thing was the fact that it existed, but nobody marketed Yokai Watch Two or Three. Like I don't remember any of the Yokai Watch games besides the first one even being mentioned. And again, that's a big problem, and that's not exclusive to the Yoka to Level Five or Yokai Watcher. Well, <laughs> Bandai Namco has done that too with Digimon, right? Digimon, the same thing. You guys don't market the games. Then you complain when they don't sell super well. Then the next game comes around. You don't want to market it because it didn't sell well. The biggest catch-22 when it comes to these Japanese games. Marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. 3 was, who would have thought, once again made available in two versions. Yokai Watch Sushi and Yokai Watch Tempura. Among other things, <laughs> Sushi Watch and Tempura is awesome. 3 added new battle systems, two main characters, new areas, and lots of new yokai. However, when Yokai Watch 3 was released in July 2016, it didn't have the same impact as the previous game. In just two years, interest... I think a big part of it too is Pokemon decided to do the whole version thing. So it's not Gold and Silver, while they codenamed it Pokemon 2 or whatever, it's not really Pokemon 2, it's Pokemon Gold and Silver. I think when you market, when you're trying to have like a long lasting franchise, this obviously isn't true in all cases. You have like Far Cry 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? You have games like that. But I think in general, when you're trying to do this sort of um, thing where the games aren't connected, I do think that a good idea is to not attach a number to them. In terms of like, this, is, this isn't completely related, but in terms of YouTube, for example, if you have a part one to something, it'll usually do the best. And then everything after that will do like worse and worse and worse. It's kind of like a, a pyramid effect because people want our slope, like a, like a downward slope, making like a, what you guys get what the hell I'm saying. Anyways, because people will feel like they're missing out if they don't go to the first one first. So if you want something to be more um, widely available, whether or not it's a sequel, unserializing it is definitely a good thing to do had already dropped by about 50%, and the game managed to sell about 630,000 copies. Within the In its first week, by the way, which is very good. It <laughs> doesn't matter if you want to say that that's a drop-off. It is a very good amount of sales. First week, which was still great, but certainly a yeah, level 5. Such a big difference. Again, when I bring forth these arguments, I'm not arguing against him. I'm just letting you guys know, because I've seen a lot of... Honestly, like a lot of people have this like weird hatred for Yokai Watch, I've noticed, uh, ever since I was trying to push to get it uh, brought back to the West. So th I'm not disagreeing with a lot of what he's saying. I actually think this video is really well put together. Um, there's just a, there's just a little bit of context. I want to add to the video that wasn't really put there because that wasn't the point of his video.
trends and interest in just two years is anything but normal. And even the extra version, released later in the year, Yokai Watch Zukiyaki could not generate nearly the same amount of excitement as the extra version of Yokai Watch 2, and sold about 338,000 copies within the first week, which was about a quarter of the extra version of Yokai Watch 2. At this point for sure, Level 5 realized that the big Yokai Watch boom was already over, and that the interest could not be sustained. In the years to come, they tried desperately to win back fans in Japan, through many new spin-offs, new anime seasons, and new merchandise, but for the most part, in vain. The expansion to the West was also anything but successful. While the sales figures of Yokai Watch 1 in the West were below expectations, they were at least not a disaster. However, the subsequent games failed to generate the same interest, and the hoped-for excitement never happened in the West. Unfortunately, no official numbers are known about the sales figures of Yokai Watch 2 and Yokai Watch 3 in the West, but the mere fact that they were never announced is generally a bad sign. Yoka yeah, Watch 3 that's what happened with Monster, uh, Monster Rancher 1 and 2 DX. They never announced the Western sales figures, or even the worldwide ones, which leads me to believe it probably didn't sell very well for example, is also quite valuable, as only a few copies of the game were even sold. But not all hope was lost yet, because Level 5 still had an ace up its sleeve to recapture both Japan and the West. Yokai Watch 4. While Yokai Watch 1 to Yokai yeah. Watch 3 were released on the old Nintendo 3DS, Yokai Watch 4 was set to run on the brand new Nintendo Switch. Yokai Watch 4 launched two years after the launch of the system. So I want you guys to keep in mind, it came out in 2019. This was a year before the big monster taming boom. This is why I'm saying that the, um, the, the environment for monster taming games is vastly different than it was before Sword and Shield came out. I'm not saying Yokai Watch would just sell millions of copies or anything like that if they came to the West, but I am saying that more people are open to other experiences now than they were, let's say back in 2013 or 2014 or whenever Yokai Watch 1 came out. Might have been 2016. No, might have been 2016 in the West. I'm not 100% sure, but in hopes that the new system would restore the series to its former glory. Rather, it confirmed the suspicions that even the biggest Yokai Watch fans must have had at the time. The game series was on a serious decline. Despite the huge popularity of the Nintendo Switch in Japan, Yokai Watch 4 sold just 150,000 copies in its first week. Okay, so I want to go back to this because this is important. Um, okay. Oh, it doesn't... Okay, never mind. I thought this was a different chart. I looked at a similar chart for Shin Megami Tensei games, and Yokai Watch 4 still outsold... Every Shin Megami Tensei game I could find, except Shin Megami Tensei 5, not because it didn't outsell it in its first week, just because I couldn't find data beyond, um, beyond, uh, what was it? I couldn't find data beyond, um, see how it says slash new next to Yakuza? I couldn't find that for its total Japan sales number. So I believe it did actually outsell, uh, SMT 5 in its first week, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I wasn't able to see if it uh, outsold it totally in terms of Japan-only sales. Because again, SMT5, while it sold a million copies, it came out worldwide, right? And it took a few months for it to get to that 1 million mark. ...copies in its first week. Even over time, interest could not be increased. And it ended the year with just 291,000 copies sold. And again, just 291,000 copies sold is a lot more than many Shin Megami Tensei games sold in Japan, even close to it. And then you see on the wiki page, and this is something a lot of people like to bring up, the Plus Plus Edition, which is a re-release, only sold 10 million, uh, 10,000 copies, or sorry, 19,000 copies in its first week. No, 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 here it is. 10,333 copies within its first week. The thing is, and this is a big problem, unlike the re-release edition of Yokai Watch 2, Yokai Watch 4 Plus Plus was also the new additional content was available as DLC. So, number one, you're pretty much always going to expect that version of the game to sell worse just because it's the same game with a few added things. But on top of that, a lot of those 291,000 people didn't see the need to buy the Plus Plus version because, I mean, why? Why would you, right? There's no point because you could just buy it as DLC. It's like if Pokemon um, Sword and Shield had their Isle of Armor, then they had a Pokemon Sword and Shield um, Isle of Armor edition, right? Like with the DLC, like it wouldn't sell nearly as much uh, as much as the original had sold. And obviously it would sell a lot more than Yokai Watch 4 Plus Plus did, but it's all marginal based on, you know, Pokemon sold like 20 million copies. This this game would, it, it would sell a marginal amount less, right? A new negative record for the series. The slightly expanded Yokai Watch 4 Plus Plus, released later in the year, was also a big disappointment, selling just about 10,000 units, from peaking at 1.3. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about this, but I think it ended up capping out at around uh, almost 100,000 sales, which, granted, like the games are so similar, you almost might as well just fuse the sales numbers together. Like, Yokai Watch 4 and Yokai Watch 4 Plus Plus are basically the same game, just there's some DLC on the plus plus version. So if you look at it like that, that's almost 400,000 copies just in Japan, 
So like not terrible and we don't have the DLC numbers either. Peaking at 1.3 million in the first week. Like I mean for example, Digimon Survive didn't sell 400,000 copies in Japan alone, right? To a low of 10,000 in the first week. A drop of more than 99%. As a result, the English... And again, like, I don't think this is purposefully disingenuous, but I do think it adds a sort of veil of disingenuousness, at least when people use this argument. Yokai Watch 2's um, definitive edition, if you will, it there, there's a lot of differences just based on the fact that there was no DLC option to my knowledge, right? So you had to buy that expansion if you wanted the updated version. It's not, there, there was no DLC option, whereas with Yokai Watch 4, there was. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue that Yokai Watch hasn't lost a big uh, sect of its person, uh, uh, of its notoriety. It's no nowhere near what it was before. Is it dead? No. Is it way less popular? And has it been brought down to a similar yet still pretty good standing level compared to other Japanese games? Yes. Again, Shin Megami Tensei, right? Uh, and trust, I'm not trying to sit here and say Shin Megami Tensei is super successful, but they do they, they do pretty good for themselves, right? Atlas is doing pretty good for themselves there. Yokai Watch is outselling them. So this is where it gets to the whole, like, people think it's dead because it's not at that Pokemon level anymore. It's not at that peak. It probably will never be at that peak again. But the fact of the matter is, it's still pulling in respectable numbers in Japan, and... The biggest problem is these guys need to realize Bandai Namco again. They need to realize that if you're gonna, I, I think if there's if they're still publishing it, that that, that is obviously this is level five uh, thing. But anyway, they need to realize that if you want these games to do well in the West, you need to market them. This yes, this is more of a niche, very Japanese concept with these yokai. And there's even a yokai game that um, was more inspired by like the Americas and stuff like that. We get it, but there's still. Uh, there's a lot of weebs out here, all right? <laughs> there's a lot of people like me that don't care if it's not, like, Americanized. Like, bring over, like, uncut, un un-Americanized versions of your games that are just available in English, and you might not sell millions and millions of copies, but you'll definitely make your money back and more. You'll make a profit on these games. So just translate them, even if it's just digital downloads, right? <laughs> it's, it's not that crazy version for western markets already announced in early 2019 never came out most likely due to the low sales in japan and the general well to be fair um level five's uh western branch actually shut down the low interest in the west american and europe which they're back now by the way he and yokai watch fans have often tried to bring the series back under the hashtag save yokai watch and also and this save yokai watch thing was actually during the time when um level five was shut down so there wasn't really anything they could do so with petitions, but to no avail. In the end, the market decides. And the market decided that not enough people are interested in Yokai Watch. Since then, no announcement has been made for a Yokai Watch 5. And it is questionable whether there will be another yeah. game in the series. We are therefore currently in the biggest period without a new Yokai Watch game, whether mainline game or spin-off. But how did it actually come to this? How can it be that within only a few years such a strong fall happened? How can it be that you take a country by storm only to almost dis So he's gonna go into the idea. I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and play the rest of the video. Uh because it's mostly just outro stuff. He's going to go into the idea that basically, like, there were, it was so much in your face that people got sick of it. And I do think this does hold. Think about our culture. Now, this is going to get a little bit philosophical. Our culture as a whole, I like to call it, I, I don't know if this is an actual thing. I, I just made this up. I like to call what we live in is like a trend culture. Everything is important when it's trending and then nobody gives a damn, right? So I remember, at least this is at least a big, huge thing in Canada, right? Everybody was talking about plastic straws. I'm sure it was a thing in America too, because Canada just copies you guys. Everybody was going on. We, we need we need to get rid of plastic straws. We need to save the environment. You know, that's fine, right? A week later, maybe maybe I'm exaggerating. A couple weeks later, nobody was talking about it. Some some businesses switched over to paper straws, and like people would like <laughs> people would shame you if you were using a plastic straw. Like people were like, you got to buy metal ones or all these businesses need to switch to paper. So, so some businesses did that, some didn't. And then just everybody just stopped talking about it. That's just one example, right? Our society, and, and you guys, you guys got to agree with me on this. Like this isn't something crazy. It runs on what's, what's like, um, trending at the moment. And then th there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of very surface level, um, bandwagoning that exists. So you'll see something's trending. I don't know. Maybe a YouTuber got canceled. Maybe um, 
uh, a, a new game came out. Everybody's talking about it. Maybe there's a new political thing going on. People will just look at it and be like, I agree with it in this form. I won't do any more research. Yes, let's do this. Like, same with video games. People will, oh, that's pretty cool. My friends are getting Yokai Watch. I'm going to get Yokai Watch. A and then they all do that because it's trendy. Once the trend goes away, the thing dies. That's why we see a lot of YouTubers that get um, big off of like one video. They die really quick because it was like that one video was just their trend. So I think a big part of it is they were kind of like a victim to trend culture in Japan. Yokai Watch was super trendy and then it just kind of fell off. Whereas Pokemon even had this this sort of similar uh, dichotomy where Pokemania was nuts. Then they started to see a fall off in um, in uh, the West and whatnot. I I'm not sure about Japan entirely, but they started to see a bit of a fall off with like Gen 3 in terms of popularity. Now they're in sort of like this renaissance, I guess you could say, where you know everybody's mad about it, but the games are selling amazing. So I do think that it has something to do with like the way maybe it's like human psychology like when things are trending every a lot of people jump on some people like myself when there's a lot of things trending and everybody's doing something i'm like the opposite like i'm like oh <laughs> like ugh. like when everyone's talking about game of thrones i refuse to watch it after it was all out and nobody was talking about it then i watched it something in my brain but anyways my point is i think yokai watch was a victim to trend culture in japan in the west i honestly think it's just because they didn't market well enough um there, there was like no marketing here no attempt to, you know, make uh, a, a more Western audience understand what yokai are. And on top of that, this was all before the big boom of monster taming. So I do think that yokai watch could make a return in the West, but you guys got to stop comparing it to Pokemon. It's compare it to other games like it. Compare it, well, I mean, like, you know, like it to an extent. Compare it to Shin Megami Tensei. Compare it to other JRPGs that are not massive corporate entities like level five. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, they're not, they're not small by any means, but not a lot of games can stand up at the table with Pokemon. You got, like, Pokemon, COD, like, <laughs> those are, like, the big, the big giants. Like, you have a few games like that, a and then everyone else is just, like, way lower than them. So, don't look at sales like that. If Yokai Watch comes to the West and sells even 200,000 copies, that's not bad. Like, th that will make them their money back and then some. So, I don't see what the reasoning is for not trying to come here. I don't know if they think the game's only going to sell 10,000 copies or something, but I do think that Yokai Watch does have the potential to make some level of comeback in the West. I don't think it would be the same as if Digimon were to do it because there's more of that like nostalgia factor, but that's pretty much what I wanted to get out of the way. I do think it's a, I, I do think this idea that Yokai Watch is dying is a little bit, not a little bit, it's, it's, in, it's inaccurate. Like it's not dying. It's not dead. The problem is it's not reaching those Pokemon numbers anymore, which most devs would never reach in the first place, right? Like Nexomon Extinction sold 125,000 copies in its like first month or whatever. And that was insane, right? It's not dead. <laughs> it's just, it's not a massive like mover for level five, I guess you could say. But, but, but you know, it can still bring in respectable numbers, I think. And I think it's doing decent enough in Japan just as a Western audience, we compare everything to Pokemon and it needs to stop. But anyways, guys, video's gone on long enough. Let me know your thoughts. Is Yokai Watch dead or is it more like what I said, where it's like, it's not at that same peak popularity, but it's still able to bring in these, you know, respectable numbers. Um, and, and maybe, you know what, maybe respectable isn't enough for them. And, and maybe we won't see Yokai Watch again. But I think I and many others that never got around to playing it when it first came out. Uh, would really like to give it a shot so it'd be nice to see but anyways guys with all that being said if you did enjoy the video make sure to like and subscribe you can check out um this channel here reggie i'll leave them linked below i uh, can go subscribe to them they're actually a very small channel that got this <laughs> this video youtube does this weird thing where it likes to like take like a really small channel's video and just blow it the hell up it deserved it it was a good video but check out their youtube channel give them some love they're only at uh 1500 subs so you know, maybe we can get them to 2,000. But anyways, um, I just want to say special thanks to my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Candy Maruncy, uh, Exodus, and I forgot someone, Dark Persona. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace.